All right, hi everyone. Um, I'm here to tell you a story. It starts with a website redesign and it ends in violence. And then also a website redesign. <laughs> I'm Jill, I'm a product designer at Boxed. Um, when I first started, Box was a pretty new company. They had just raised their Series B. They got 25 million, which was amazing. And they were in a sweet 20 person office in Soho. Uh, they were just a small company dedicated to building something cool. So fast forward five months and we're still in that 20 person office in Soho, except there's 60 of us. We're sharing desks. The interns have been banished to the hallway and Everyone is sick with the same thing. And the product team is in the five by five conference room where people usually take individual calls except there's seven of us. And I've literally backed myself into a corner to get away from the app designer who's trying to punch the project manager in the face. And our engineering lead who moonlights as a pastor uh, has placed himself firmly in between them. They're screaming at each other about process, timing, accountability, and work not getting done. And um, I can see through the glass door that the entire office is staring at us. The door is not doing anything in the way of muffling the yelling. And our customer service manager is outside mouthing the words to me, what is going on? I just shrug and turn back to the drama. You never get your work done on time or at all. You're three weeks late again. You don't know anything about me or my work. You're not a designer. I could design better than you, I know that. Finally, our CTO steps in the middle and tells them that yelling isn't gonna solve anything. There's gotta be a better way to get to the bottom of this, so maybe someone who's calm should share. Jill, you seem quiet. Do you care to give your thoughts on the situation? I declined to comment on the grounds of not wanting to get punched in the face. <laughs> Besides, this was not really my fight. Um, but I often think back on that conversation and how we got there. This wasn't the first yelling match that they'd had, but it was the only one that ended up in projectiles being launched across the room. And thankfully, it was the last. Our project manager had had it up to her eyeballs in excuses. Our app designer was constantly complaining about how hard it was to be the only designer on a platform at a busy startup that was constantly changing, and the hours were long, and it still wasn't enough time, and it was nothing like her old company, and a million other excuses for why work wasn't getting done. Now, all of this complaining bothered me. I was also the only designer for my platform. At the same busy startup, my hours were late and it still wasn't enough time and it was nothing like my old company, but I liked all of those things. I didn't waste my time complaining, I tried to be proactive, I made sure my deadlines were met and I asked for help when I needed it. I was working hard every day, doing everything I could, sometimes excelling, sometimes failing, but always trying. So I know it can be done, and I'm here today to tell you how. It's not easy to be the solo designer. It's hard, it takes patience and integrity, but it's also empowering and rewarding. So let me take a step back. Box is a startup here in New York. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, we're a wholesale delivery service. Um, so you order your household goods in bulk on your phone or on your laptop, and we deliver them to you. It's Costco without the membership fee, and you never have to leave your couch. Box was founded about two years ago by some coworkers at a mobile gaming company who wanted to do something more impactful with mobile technology. So after coming up with the idea, these four guys started the business out of our CEO's garage. And as they grew, they wanted to keep the team lean. There's never been process for the sake of process, meetings for the sake of meetings, or butts and seats for the sake of having butts and seats. So lean team, right? It's unusual for a company that reaches so far. We have multiple warehouses, we deliver thousands of boxes every day to every corner of the country, and we do it in the same times as Amazon. We carry the same products as Costco, and we deliver groceries same day like Fresh Direct. And lean team means lean design. I've been the sole web designer at Boxed for quite a while, and some of my practices are unorthodox, but I make them work or I try to find something that does. A little bit about my past. Uh, I spent two years um, at a marketing startup as a product designer, and a big part of my experience there was process, watching the team grow. We grew from three people to 12 people, but I always had a design team around me. 
and there was a big emphasis on hierarchy and checks and balances ending in thoughtful design. And having an established process is comforting. Box had no design team. They had no process, they had no hierarchy. They just built stuff and ran a business. So they needed a designer and that's where I came in. So these are my tips on surviving and thriving as a solo designer. Number one, own your design, develop your process, and do it with confidence. Everything you used to have a creative director, a senior designer, or a fellow designer for, too bad, they're not here anymore. Taking on a role as a solo designer means taking on the responsibilities of all of those roles and making the best decisions that you can. Not having a team around you to catch you before you fail can be terrifying, but you don't have time to second guess yourself or think about how you could fail. Your time is too valuable. So take the process that you learned from previous roles or from school and adapt it to what you need to happen in your new role. A few days after the great conference room conflict of 2015, my boss came to me and told me that checkout needed to be redone. It was confusing and we needed someone on it immediately. I could redesign a checkout that was easy to use and efficient, right? Yes? <laughs> I came from a marketing and social media background and I was doing what I could on the job to learn everything about e-commerce. No, I had never designed a checkout before, but I knew I needed to create a process, so I jumped in and I researched and I read articles and I tried what felt like every site's checkout. And I'm pretty sure people thought I was online shopping all day. And sometimes I was. <laughs> I accidentally bought a $50 book on Kickstarter and realized that one-click checkout can be more surprising than convenient. Um, I did stakeholder interviews to figure out why the company wanted checkout redesigned. And I talked to every member of the customer service team to figure out what the pain points were. And before I knew it, I had a vision for what this should look like. Now, my tech team was a little confused. They had never worked with a designer specifically on web before, and they wanted to know what was taking so long. My CTO specifically wanted to know, do you really need to do wireframes? Yes. <laughs> so I wireframed, and this whole process felt like an eternity, but it actually only lasted about three weeks. When I broke from the original way of doing things, it concerned people. But they, they wanted to know, do we really need all this process? What's taking so long? But the results spoke for themselves and um, I was able to move forward. So the bottom line is find something that works and get going. Number two, time. People are always gonna wonder why things aren't being done faster. So why aren't they being done faster? You're only one person. That means you can't work on more than one thing at once. You can multitask, sure, but you can't work on two things simultaneously. And this makes empathy a new and improved part of your job. Everyone's gonna see the feature that they need as the most important, but everyone needs to feel heard and respected because you can't work on everyone's feature at once. And you want to make sure that everyone feels like an important member of your team so they don't try to take projects over your head. With timing, it's not about designing faster. It's about setting expectations across the teams and the people you work with um, and building mutual respect. And designing minimum viable products can really help you do that. It's gonna help you work nimbly from project to project and team to team. After checkout, my team understood my process and why I needed it. But to those outside of my team, what I saw as three weeks well spent, they saw as three weeks of their features not being fulfilled. And suddenly, me as a bottleneck. There was one large feature that I had been working on whenever I got a few minutes in my spare time. Uh, but I was getting antsy, so one Monday morning I came in and I sat down and I wrote a message on Slack. Hey team. I need three days to finish this. It needs my full attention, so please try and keep interruptions to a minimum. I'll get to everything else when I have the time. And I felt great about that. But I immediately got a message back from my boss saying, that's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> so marketing needed a new feature, and they needed it now, and it was not small. I find that my days are often filled with surprises. I mostly work on two different 
two different types of requests, uh, the feature sprint and the visual request, AKA the fire drill. And two of the teams that I often balance are B2B and marketing. The B2B team wants long-term improvements for the site that are gonna help us build feature sets, whereas the marketing team wants constant visual updates based on their ongoing campaigns. These are two very different parts of my job, but they're both equally important. So I make sure that I have the time to spend sitting down with the B2B team, understanding their initiatives, and we set up measurable releases. They provide me with detailed briefs, and they're really great about accepting flexible dates on when to expect designs because I'm always expecting short-term projects. So the bottom line is it's all about balance and empathy. Hear people in order to be heard. Number three, learn to say no. Gone are the days of the design team where each person can work on a different feature at the same time and you deploy like a well-oiled machine. In your new role as a solo designer, you're gonna have those days where you come in and find out that your CTO wants a new checkout. At the same time, your CEO needs the homepage redesigned. At the same time, your CMO needs an About Us page. And you can't do all of those things at once. So you're gonna have to remind people, you're only one person, they're gonna have to be patient, and sometimes you're just gonna have to say no. So learning to say no is a really important part of the solo designer's job. And be honest with yourself if you're starting to get burnt out. There's gonna be those days where you just have to step back and say, I'm overwhelmed, but can I handle this? Is this an anomaly, or am I always this busy now? And Use that to understand if you're gonna to start to need help. Even when your company is dedicated to keeping the team lean and you can't hire a new designer right now, third parties can still be reached out to. So it didn't take me long at all to stop trying to be everyone's designer. I was hired specifically for web, but people heard designer and their ears pricked up. We need a new Facebook ad. Um, we could really use a new PowerPoint format. We could use your keen design eye to pick out new tiles for the bathroom. <laughs> we hate the logo, so feel free to redesign it. Come to think of it, the entire brand could use a refresh. Okay, okay. Yeah, none of you are wrong, but you also just told me that checkout's broken, and that's really important. So I'm sure whatever tiles you choose for the bathroom are gonna look great. So creating consistency and a solid base for the website was my priority. Rebranding the company by myself was not. So we reached out to Red Antler and suddenly we had an entire team dedicated to building this new brand for us. And I used my time to create consistency on the site. We put in a temporary style guide, created hierarchy and consistency. And Red Antler came up with an amazing brand for us. And by the time they were finished, I was in a great place to apply it to our site. <laughs> If I said yes to everything, yes, I can do the rebrand and your PowerPoint and your Facebook ads and the packaging plus my own UX UI work, I would have dropped dead like seven months ago and everything would have looked terrible. So that simple no, I need help, led to a whole other company dedicated to creating this new brand for us and I just used my time to take care of my own platform. So the bottom line is no means no and um, I'll see if I have time also means no. <laughs> and finally, number four, be okay with failing. This all ends in doing the best you can in your unique situation. You're, you've got a lot on your plate and eventually something is going to fall through. Sometimes things just don't turn out how you want them to, whether it's because of timing or deadlines and oversight or just plain old ugly design because that happens sometimes. But the great part of working in tech and in product is everything is in pixels, it's in code so it can change. Nothing is set in stone. stone. <laughs> um, so any designer can be really critical of the work they do but it's important to own your successes as well and, Learn to use those around you to help you succeed. Even when you don't have a design team, you still have people around you. So I found that front end is really my best resource for visual feedback. QA is my best resource for making sure that I've accounted for everything. And that guy on Slack who's always correcting everyone's grammar is my best resource for catching typos. But when bad decisions make it through, it's not time to shirk responsibility. You need to own up and learn so it doesn't happen again. Navigation is the base of every website and there's a hundred ways to do it. 
When I first started at Boxed, we had an expanded side nav on a non-responsive site. But when we made the site responsive, I decided to go for a top nav. We spent a lot of time designing and building, but as the responsive work went on, we added more and more content to the site, which was great for the business, but bad for me. It broke my navigation, but we still needed to deploy, so we did what we could, and we implemented a system that was least likely to break. But it was unsustainable, and it was confusing, and I was responsible for it. So instead of not wanting to ever touch it again because I'm scared I'm gonna break something again, or saying it was fine and leaving it alone, I made it my mission to come up with a new navigation. And I used the process that I put in place. I people pleased to get it to the top of the queue and I future proofed this time by user testing and prototyping. And then I designed my ass off. So you can see up here what our new navigation looks like and we're going live with it very soon, so everyone's really excited. Um, and that's about it. It's not easy to be a solo designer. It's really hard. It takes everything that you have and more, but if you're doing something right, it means you don't have to stay lonely forever. We have five designers across the company now, including a brand new designer to help me out on web. Uh, so I'm going on vacation. Good luck, Claire. I hope you were listening. <laughs> Um, so thank you everyone so much. I'm Jill, I'm from Box Wholesale for, as a thanks for letting me ramble on. Here's a coupon code for you guys. We really hope to see you on the site or on the app soon and have a great night. I'm assured, uh, to the Q &A. So I'm sure this thing is a oh, right. working mic, and we can use it and throw it around and do Q and A. So let's give this a shot. Uh, <laughs> anyone got a question? Here you go. All right, we need to just go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so out of the four things that you mentioned, you know, in the process, did you find one that was slightly more important than the other, or did they all sort of? Yeah. I mean, is there one that you personally and professionally feel takes precedence or takes priority? Could everybody hear the question? Okay. Uh, the question was out of the four principles, is there one that I find is most helpful or more helpful than the others? They're all really helpful, but I think that I find, hmm, let's see, the second one. Um, learning to work with everybody in your company okay and, and building that empathy because if people don't understand your timing as a solo designer, they, they're not gonna understand why their projects aren't being done quick enough. And like I said, you don't want people to take projects over your head. You need people to respect you enough to know that they have to wait you know, for your design help and, and for your say in things. Because also, there becomes a time when you're really in sync with your company and you can say like, no, I trust you. It's, you know, something small or something that you're really great at and you can take that on by yourself. Uh, good speech, very nice. Uh, Thanks. She's a designer and uh, she's UX, we work for the same company. Wait a <laughs> so, in your process, who has been the biggest pain in your ass, <laughs> and who is your best ally? Okay. Um, in the process, wireframing and your interviews and visual and all that. Um, biggest pain in the ass. Well, seeing as most of my web team is here today, no one. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I think that I mostly come to misunderstandings with QA a lot. Um, and the fact that when I haven't fully accounted for a situation and she will come to me and say like, okay, well you forgot about this, so you need to change all of this. Um, and I get stubborn and I don't want to. Um, biggest asset is probably our product manager. Um, who started in between the time of like the first fighting and all the way up to navigation. Um, and she's been really helpful in fielding all of the requests and organizing the other teams so it's not something that designers have to deal with or you know, developers have to deal with. Uh, so you mentioned that you did not come to 
the designer's background. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just wanted to know, now that you're working with other designers, do you find it beneficial to hire people that don't come from the same background or good designers? Or do you think that it's actually pretty helpful to have that more than um, I think that it hasn't been the most important part of hiring designers. The, the most important part to me is a visual background and making sure that they can design beautiful things on top of like the UX and UI work. Um, because from experience, I know that the intricacies from platform to platform can change so much. So I don't you know, specifically look for people with e-commerce backgrounds. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. It was awesome. Thank you.